Hello, everyone. Thanks for taking the time to listen to our talk today. I'm Amit, a PM from Microsoft, and I want to welcome you all to Lights, Camera, Action, a talk about a framework that will allow you to improve NLP models and their accuracy from text that you get from OCR documents. Let me start by setting some context. Document digitization has become very easy. Someone can be sitting at a cafe, pull out a phone and quickly digitize a receipt or a document in seconds. Similar advances have been made in the fields of optical character recognition that allows us to scan more effectively as well as NLP techniques or uh, models that can allow us to mine information out of the text very effectively. Due to the combination of OCR and NLP, we are able to offer customers unique experiences like searching scan documents, summarizing scan documents, and much more. However, when the quality of the scan document is bad, OCR can produce questionable results on such noisy documents. On the screen is an example of such a noisy document. Whenever you try to use OCR text on, from such documents for downstream NLP processing, the results are far from good. We explored the NLP task of entity recognition that enables searching on scanned documents. OCR errors hamper the quality of entity recognition and the performance drop is pretty bad. This resulted in inaccuracy in the information that was mined in documents and the search wasn't accurate. Hence, we started out with two goals in mind. First, we wanted to create noise robust entity recognition models. And an essential milestone on that path was our second goal, to basically generate synthetic data that will allow us to simulate noise that is seen in OCR documents. Let me take a moment to talk about our experimental setup. This is a block diagram that showcases various components and the flow of our experimentation pipeline. We'll dive into details regarding two main aspects of our pipeline. We'll talk about our document generation, degradation, and text alignment package, Genalog, and secondly, our action prediction model and its results. Genalog is shown in green, and the action prediction model's various steps are shown in orange in this diagram. Blue represents the artifacts that we generated at various stages in the pipeline. Now I'd like to call upon Johnji to talk about Genlog. Thank you, Amit. Genlog is an open source Python package for generating synthetic documents. We provide four main capabilities, including the ability to create synthetic documents and customize them with HTML and CSS. We can add degradations onto these documents to simulate real world scans, then extract from such documents text uh, using Azure OCR. Finally, we also provide efficient text alignment implementations for long documents. Well, that's enough words on Genalog. Let's see it in action. First, I will bring your attention to style confirmation. This will control the style rendering this document in, such as font, font size, hyphenation. We then select the right HTML template for this text to be injected into. This template will control the layout of the document. You can see here it's just a double column we just like table or a text, simple text block. Genalog runs on a mock browser engine to interpret these CSS and HTML templates to render these images you see on the right. If you're familiar with web development, these values, these CSS values should be familiar to you. Once the, gener uh, the document is generated, we can apply a mix of degradations in sequence to that document. For example, blur can reduce the resolution of the image. Bleed through can mimic a document printed on double side. Another useful feature you can leverage Genalog for is its text alignment capabilities. In particular, when you're trying to synthetically induce OCR noise into a text sequence, we're faced with this uh, labeling issues. For example, here we have two copies of uh, New York Spring. On the on top is the ground truth. The bottom is the uh, noisier version with OCR noise. 
and you can see we can obtain the in your labels from the original data sets, but we do not have the labels, the corresponding labels for these newly generated noisy tokens. To solve this problem, we can use text alignments. Alignment algorithms will try to associate matching characters and inject gap characters whenever necessary to adjust the alignment results. With this character level alignment, we can interpret the relationship between the ground truth tokens on the top and the noisy token on the bottom. And using this token relationship, we can then successfully propagate the NUI labels down and relabels and relabel this uh, noisy tokens. Let's discuss related work and common approaches to text restoration. Sequence to sequence models are a very natural first approach. They convert an input text into an output text and they can process text at the character level. The LSTM is a very common paradigm for such sequence to sequence models. Usually one LSTM will encode input text and another LSTM will produce output text. The issue that we found with seek to seek models is that with long sequence lengths, they tend to uh, produce more errors than they correct. Another approach to text restoration is the use of an encoder decoder model with a single or several LSTM layers, um, specifically a by LSTM. In the case of a by LSTM, decoding is done after both the forward and backward LSTMs encode the input sequence. Here, the uh, decoding happens at every character step, so the output text characters are aligned one to one with the input text characters. Um, this produces a character shift problem that we will discuss on the next slide. So here we see the character shift problem. Um, on the left side of the screen, uh, there's the top row, which is the ground truth text, New York is wonderful, and the bottom row is the OCR text. So here we have a substitution with the W turning to a V, a deletion with the York, with the Y and York removed, and another deletion with the W and wonderful removed. So as these deletions accumulate, the by LSTM suffers a cumulative character shift. The network has to account for this growing uh, shift by contrast, the action prediction model does not have this problem. For each character time step, four actions are predicted, an insertion and which character to insert, a deletion, substitution, and no action at all. Our approach to improve the accuracy of the downstream and error task is very simple and has two stages. First, we can start the text with the text. The diagram on the right shows an overview of the architecture of the action prediction model. We work on the level of characters as most of the errors affects on, affect only a single character. We pass each character in the input sentence through the embedding layer to get character embeddings. Next, we pass these embeddings to the 1D convolution layer. The resulting character representation will have information not only about the character itself, but also the context. Finally, this embedding is passed to two separate fully connected layers, one to predict the action and another one to predict the target character for actions like insert or replace. The whole model is trained jointly with two cross the losses. And as you can see, only five actions is enough to, to be able to restore most of the OCR errors. Here you can see some examples how the action prediction model can restore the text suffered from OCR errors. Notice, for example, how the dash space in the middle of a word is a very common case where the OCR engine was not able to figure out the line break, and our model was able to fix this mistake. In the last example, you can see how the exclamation point in the beginning of the sentence produced by the OCR was correctly replaced to I by our model. Here you can see the performance of the action prediction model on different degradation levels in terms of character level and word level accuracy. Notice how even slight drop in character level accuracy leads to a much bigger drop in the word level accuracy, especially all on all degradations heavy. Our model, however, is able to restore the text and bring the character and word level accuracies up on all datasets and all degradation levels. This table shows the result of the action prediction model on the downstream task of NAR. The first row shows the results on the in-domain kernel datasets. Notice how the NAR accuracy on the degraded text drops down and our model is able to restore up to 73% of the gap. The last line shows the result on the out of the domain CNN dataset. The drop in performance here is even higher, but our model is able to successfully bring up the NAR accuracy from 0.59 to 
To conclude, this is the learnings and takeaways from this project. First, Genalog is able to generate synthetic images with realistic degradations. It's very flexible, easy configurable, and provides several templates out of the box. If you deal with noisy or user-generated text, Genalog can really help you, so check it out, it's open source and free to use. Next, our action prediction model successfully mitigates the character shift problem by design. Trained on the data generated by Genalog, it is able to restore the text from most errors on different levels of degradations, from very light to very heavy. Finally, we show that this iteration significantly reduces the drop in accuracy on the downstream task of an ER caused by the engine and noisy input. Although we experimented only with NER, the proposed method is very flexible and can be applied on any downstream task.